nervous. So she gets gifted a Christmas toy. I think it's brother's teammate. I'm here for the spice and nothing else. It was hot. I was into it. He's got a big peen. Squirtle turtle scene. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, my name is Lauren. And to this weekend, we are doing a little reading vloggy. And it's not just any reading vlog. We're doing a Christmas themed reading vlog. We're gonna be reading some smutty little novellas, some like chaotic, some just kind of romantic. We'll see whether where this vlog takes us and how we go. But I'm gonna start with the banger. And that banger is um, an interesting one. If you haven't heard of it, it is called Elft. I don't know if I am ready for this. All I know is that it is 36 pages. So let's go. Let's read this book and see what happens because I am nervous. I finished that. I finished Elf. Uh, that was an experience. So she gets gifted a Christmas toy that looks like a candy cane basically and it turns into a fully grown male with like six arms every Christmas and his job is to make her come it was strange it was 30 pages like it was just 30 pages it was hilarious but you know whatever and his come tastes like vanilla and like nutmeg and like Christmassy tastes. So that was fun. I mean, if you want something silly and funny, I'd give it a go, but yeah, that was a fun time. So now I gotta pick my next book. I don't know what that's gonna be. So let's decide. I've picked my next read. I am fading very quickly. I did get home last night at like one o'clock in the morning. The time I went to sleep was probably closer to two. So I didn't sleep a lot, but I am getting tired. So we'll see how we go. But I'm gonna read Christmas Presents by Tara DeWitt. I love Tara DeWitt's writing. I love her to death. I've read her entire backlog at this point. So let's read a little fun Christmas novella. I don't know what this is about. Set in Boise, Idaho. Let's go, let's see what this is about. 41 pages it says. Uh, in Idaho, Tate and Henry make a last minute change of plans for the holiday and scramble to get into the spirit. In LA, Maya, Farley and Far Farley watch Hazel perform the Nutcracked Up, Nutcracker and reflect on some, okay. So this is a bind up of three short stories to do with each of the couples that are in her backlog. So I've read her entire backlog. So you got one story about um, Deacon and Lorin. That's from the co-op. Uh, Mayor and Farley are from the, from Funny Feelings and Tate and Henry are from Rebound. Let's go. I'm so excited now. I just finished that. That was so quick. It was like 41 pages. So stinking cute. I loved revisiting my favorite characters back at Christmas. So the first one is Tate and Henry and it's a proposal story. It is so sweet, so cute. We get a nice little cheeky spicy scene. It was great. And then the second one was from Funny Feeling, so Maya and Farley and so wholesome, so, so wholesome. I just want to read you a little quote that I highlighted. And I thought it was really cute. So it was like the daughter that's now, so Maya's daughter is growing up and she's now realized, you know, Santa and the whole thing is not real. And she's been lying to her dad because she didn't want to ruin the magic of Christmas and stuff. So she had ended up talking to Farley about it. Um, and she says, I talked to Fee. She told me that Santa is still something to believe in, even though you are the one who wrapped my presents fills up my and fills up my stockings. She said that it's because it teaches us to believe in something that we can't see or touch. She also accidentally said here, but I forgave her for that because they're speaking in sign language. So she said the wrong word. Anyway, I think that's so wholesome. Like don't necessarily believe in Santa because you think it's real and you're a little kid. It's more believe in Santa and believe in like the magic and the spirit because it gives you something to believe in and something to hold on to and to feel like it just, yeah, it brings like magic. I just, I loved it. 
And then this final story is The Cult, which is my favorite, one of my favorite books of the year. And it was great. It was so cute, so sweet. Um, Deacon's like on his knees for his wife and I just, I love it. Spice, 10 out of 10. It's the next day. I've started my next book and it is the Christmas Cupid by Ilsa Madden, Ilsa or Isla. I'm not sure if it's Ilsa, people say Ilsa. Madden Mills um, and I have the Fearless World Tour on the TV in the background. So let's get reading. I started this last night. I believe this is actually a hockey romance. So it's hockey, it's hockey. I think it's brother's teammate. We'll find out. On to the next book. I am starting Set the Record Straight. I'm gonna do it on audio because I've got some shit to do around the house. I'm gonna listen to that and then update you guys as we go along. But that is an, it is an FF Christmas no, no, novel. I think it's like a bit chunkier. So I'm gonna listen to an audio book. We'll report back. I just finished Set the Record Straight. Had a great freaking time. I think I'm gonna give it a four stars because this is definitely like a romance, a heavy novel more than like a Christmas novel. Like you could read this any time of year and you would still like enjoy it. The Christmassy stuff only really happens at the end and in the epilogue. It was beautiful. A beautiful friends to lovers. Romance their childhood friends. Like everyone could kind of tell that they had feelings for each other, but obviously nothing was ever pursued. There were, ch there were children. And Clara always thought she was straight or just like not really a sexual romantic kind of person. She has ADHD. So this is her lesbian awakening. And then you have Evan who has always been bisexual, has always been a lesbian and also has autism. I loved it. It was so good. The spice freaking delivered. You want spice? Read this book. It is not anything crazy, but like the descriptiveness and like the way things occur. It was hot. Like I was into it. I just ended up starting Dear Monster Claws because I felt like a little spicy monster romance. So um, he's got a big peen. Does things like a candy cane. This is hot. Let's keep going. I'm into this. And it's like, he falls first. He's like obsessed with her. He hasn't been into anyone in years, hasn't had anyone in years. And now all of a sudden he's like, I'm hot for her. Really enjoy that, really insta -lusty. He has a peppermint flavored. He's come is peppermint flavored. Basically looks like a candy cane. He is gonna be the new like Santa Claus. Hence like monster claws. And she writes him letters. They have babies at the end. The spice was really good. I actually really enjoyed the way that this was written. It was really easy to read. I highly recommend if you want a monster spicy book, this was fun. I don't know what I'm gonna pick up next. I think I'm gonna move for something hockey. So I think I'm gonna pick up Jingle Wars by Marin Moore and Veronica Eden. I think it's hockey. I really have no idea. It's an enemies to lovers holiday romance. So we're gonna try that next. We'll report back. Okay, so this, I am 15% of the way through this book. Um, This is a enemies to lovers sort of they're in you know, this Christmassy town and they're doing the Jingle Wars, like a competition set up in, the, in their town and they hate each other. It's funny, obviously no spice yet. I think it's gonna be a little while before it gets spice. It is 280 pages. So basically it's a full length novel. So I don't think we're gonna get spice for at least another 747 pages. I think at least another 100 pages before we get spice. Hopefully power through and get to the spice because I'm here for the spice and nothing else. When I read a Christmas book, I'm here for the spice and nothing else. Just she's up in a five-star res resort in this small town. He is running his family to inn and it's like on the brink of collapse and basically next door. So there's tension because he wants to save the business. And she comes from money, of course. Okay, it is the next morning. Um, I am up to page chapter 26 of The Vacation Wars. So 242. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. The tension was really great and like the spice hit at 50%. There hasn't been a lot of spice. It is definitely much like tension and these two like working out their issues. Um, so obviously Freya comes from like a rich family and she's trying to start like a new business and her dad's like, like, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. And now we've just finished like the vacation wars aspect and she's going back home because her dad's like, you need to come home. You, you can't do this. Um, so we're at that. And it's like the tension point to the like, breakup scene. So all that is happening and yeah i'm really into it curious to see how the rest of this goes i do need to shower and wash my hair so i'm probably going to do that and listen to a diff like listen to an audiobook while i do that so i have christmas on the 13th floor left and then marin more books and maybe an l thorpe cowboy 
one, but we will see how we go. I really enjoy Vacation Wars if you want like a light-hearted enemies to lovers, quite funny um, Christmassy book. I think this is a great recommendation. Um, not overly spicy, but it's still a good time. Okay, so we're a little bit later on in the afternoon on a little, it's afternoon on Sunday and I have finished Jingle Wars. I think I'm gonna give it a three stars. It was good, it was palatable. Just not, my, not a freaking super standout, but I enjoyed it, highly recommend. The ending was cute, the epilogue was cute. I enjoyed it. I've now started on audio when How the Grump Saved Christmas by Claire Kingsley. I needed something to just listen to while I'm edit editing my vlog mess. And then I also have to do some ironing, which is just lovely fun stuff. I had to wash my hair, which I obviously blow dried. Um, and obviously listen to this, but I am like a bit into it now. I got four chapters in and it's a second chance romance between um, Elias and Isabella, Isabel, I think it's Isabel. And he is part of this big company that is trying to buy her land and like the farm that she owns. And she's like, no, 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 I want to save it from falling apart. Like it's literally on the verge of collapse and she's trying to save it from her, like, for her family. Um, but he lived in her small town for a little while and they were previously engaged and haven't spoken in 11 years. He's obviously going to go to her town at some point. That's going to be fun, but I will update you guys as we go along. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's really palatable, really good. It is that early, early Christmas sort of novel. Like it's just, it's November. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully the spice is good. I'm just here for the spice. Okay, so I'm here to wrap everything up. I ended up just like not vlogging, but I want to talk through the recommendations and the books that I ended up reading afterwards. There was a few and I had a good time, but some of them were like major, major flops. So I obviously finished How the Grum Saved Christmas. I'm giving that a three stars. It was a good time. It was fun, like maybe a little bit long. Obviously the wrap up, wrapping up the plot was very convenient, but I do like the fact that the guy self-sacrificed for the woman for a change. I think that was great. Um, and obviously there wasn't enough spice, but it's fine. I'm not gonna complain. It was a good, sweet Christmassy read. I really enjoy Claire Kingsley's writing though. Definitely like an author I would go back to and read the rest of her Small Town series because I'm very intrigued to see where the relationships go with the rest of the characters involved in this little small town. So yeah. No complaints. Um, I don't know if I said, but I ended up reading Christmas Cupid at three stars. It kind of felt unfinished and wrapped up a little bit strangely. No confirmation about why they ended up in that cabin at the same time. It was kind of implied, but not fully explained. Um, and not enough spice, again. The Mistletoe Bet, I felt, I gave it a two stars. I, I didn't vibe the relationship a lot. Wasn't fully invested. The spice was okay. There was a little squirtle turtle scene, which we always love, but that's that one. Then I read a little short, little super, super, super short Christmas novella by Belle Harper. This is like a why choose she's older, smutty novel. The spice was great. Don't get me wrong. The spice was great. I felt it really annoying. Like the, like, we kept talking about how she was so much older. She was two years older than these guys. She was 23, going through a divorce, and they were 21, college students. Like, it's really not that big of an age gap. It's not a big deal. They will play hockey. I don't know. It's a little bit strange. I was there for the spice and nothing else. It got her two stars. And then the last Christmas book that I read was A Festive Feud by Mary Moore as well. This one is getting a four star though. I really enjoyed it. The dynamic was really fun. I really enjoyed the way that the whole concept, like, they're, these two families are feuding and they have to host a Christmas party together. I thought it was really fun. Again, the spice was was good. Was very good. No complaints from me. But in terms of ranking, um, first is definitely set the record straight. It's freaking fantastic. Closely followed by Christmas presents. Then how the Grum saved Christmas. Jingle Wars. Followed by Christmas Cupid. Then Elfed. Then Belle Harper's book. And finally... Dear Monster Claws is the last one. That is my ranking. If you're wanting for a f if you're wanting a fun festive time, these are the books that I would recommend trying and seeing how you go. Obviously, everyone has different tastes. Some of you, some of you may enjoy this more or less than others, but this is how I feel about them. I'm obviously they were a good time, but in comparison to a full like novel, these just aren't as good. And obviously, in comparison to Tis the Season for Revenge, these guys. I know it was good. This is God tier Christmas book. So that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me what you guys have been reading this festive season. I would love to hear about it. But don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications because this wrap up series is freaking fire. I'm obsessed. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.